Hi. Welcome back. In chapter 18 we will cover inheritance. This is what we will be learning in the chapter. What is inheritance? Remember the aircraft system we learned as an example in the chapter on OOPS. At most basic level we had the fundamental aircraft systems, which formed the base class. Based on these core features like the propeller, engine, wings, fuselage and tail, we manufactured a real aircraft, the Cessna. So the Cessna is an object of the base class, aircraft system. Then we devise another plan, which needs to facilitate passenger travel. This new plan is the child class 1, which needs all features of the basic aircraft system, but also needs some additional advanced features. So the child class 1, inherits all features from its parent system, or the base class, and adds up its own as well. Based on this modified child class 1, we develop the object, or real-world passenger aircraft, the Boeing 737. This is inheritance. Similarly, the child class 2 inherits all basic properties from the base class, and adds on its own advanced features to create the blueprint of a fighter jet aircraft. Based on the inherited and modified features of child class 2, we develop a real-world fighter aircraft, the F-22 Raptor. So what is inheritance? Inheritance is the process of extending data and functional features of an existing class, or base class, to another class, the derived class, so that its features are upgraded for better performance, and technology upscaling. A base class is referred to as parent, or super class, and the derived class is also called child class. The derived class will inherit basic data and functions of its parent class, and in addition, it will also have its own member data and member functions. Furthermore, a derived class can be used as base class for another derived class. In this way, multiple inheritance is achieved. Inheritance thus allows the creation of hierarchical classifications that possess enhanced capabilities. Types of inheritance Number 1. Single inheritance, only one super class. When a class inherits features from one parent class, it is single inheritance. Number 2. Multiple inheritance, several super classes. When a class inherits features from multiple parent classes, it is multiple inheritance. Number 3. Hierarchical inheritance, one superclass and many subclasses. When more than one class inherits features from a base class, it is hierarchical inheritance. Number 4. Multi-level inheritance, derived from a derived class. When a class inherits features from a derived class, it is multi-level inheritance. Number 5. Hybrid inheritance, derived from multiple classes or derived classes. When a class inherits features from more than one inherited class, it is hybrid inheritance. Base class access control. When a class inherits another class, members of the base class become members of the derived class. Syntax to declare an inherited class is given here. This is an example where we create a class named derived, which inherits properties from another class named base. Inheritance, and private, or public members. Access specifiers for data and functions in a derived class are, public, private, and protected. If access specifier is absent, private is set by default. If derived class is a struct, then public, is set by default. When access specifier for a base class is public, all public members of the base class become public members of the derived class, and all protected members of the base class become protected members of the derived class. Private member elements remain private to the base class and are not accessible by members of the derived class. We will next learn how inheritance can be applied in the C++ program. Program 61. Create a class base aircraft with name, speed, and features. Create class passenger aircraft that inherits base aircraft class and has own name, speed, and features. Print details of both aircrafts. Here is the program code and this is the class named base aircraft. We declare public as the access specifier for all declarations below. The base name of this base aircraft is set as Cessna 172. The base speed is set as 302 km per hour. Then the base features for this aircraft are set. The show base function displays this base aircraft's name, from base name, speed, from base speed, and features, from base features. We next declare the class passenger aircraft, and it's linked to the class named base aircraft. 
so it inherits all the properties, or features, from the base aircraft class. Thus these two classes are linked to each other with inheritance. Here too, we have the public access specifier. Then the name for this passenger aircraft is set with value, Boeing 737. The passenger aircraft speed is assigned value 946 km per hour. New features for this passenger aircraft are assigned. The show passenger function displays this passenger aircraft's name, from passenger name, speed, from passenger speed, basic features from its parent class character array named base features, and advanced features, or features plus, from passenger features of this very class. So our class declarations are over here. Program control shifts to line 31 of main function. An object named P, from the class, passenger aircraft, is created. Since it inherits the class, base aircraft, this object has features of base aircraft class, and also the features of passenger aircraft class. Control shifts to line 32 of the program code. It's a print statement. So on output screen, the title base aircraft details, is printed. On line 33 of program code, the show base function of object P is invoked. Remember that P is an object of the second class, or the derived class passenger aircraft, and show base function is a function of the first, or the base class, base aircraft. Details of the base aircraft are printed on screen. Control shifts to the print statement on line 34 of program code. So on output screen, the title passenger aircraft details is printed. On line 35 of program code, the show passenger function of object P is invoked. Details of the passenger aircraft are printed on screen. Here, refer to lines 25 and 26, the aircraft features of both basic version and the advanced passenger version are printed. The program ends. So, what did we learn here? We linked a class passenger aircraft as child class of base aircraft. We then created an object of the child class, and from this child class, we accessed the data field, base features, which is of the parent class. Similarly from child class, we also access the show base function of parent class. We will next look at inheritance and protected members. The protected member of a class is accessible within the class and within its inherited classes. Remember that the private member of a base class is not accessible by other parts of your program including any derived class. When a base class is inherited using the private access specifier, all public and protected members of the base class become private members of the derived class. However, protected members behave differently. If the base class is inherited as public, then protected members of the base class become protected members of the derived class and are therefore accessible by the derived class. By using access specifier protected, you can create class members that are private to their class, but they can still be inherited and accessed by a derived class. We will now play around with a couple of programs. This time I leave it for you to track the code control sequence. So here is program 62. Write a program using inheritance to create a derived class that assigns integer values into protected members of its base class and prints them using base class functions. Multiply these integer values of base class and print the result using functions of the derived class. Here is the code, and this is the output. Here, derived class function, the set k function, is able to access protected members i and j because the base class is inherited by derived class as public. If i and j had been declared as private by the base class, then derived class would not have access to them and the program would not compile. When a derived class is used as base class for another derived class, any protected member of the initial base class will be inherited as protected within the second derived class, and so, it will also have access to i and j. In our next program, create two classes with one integer member and a print value function within each of them. Create a child class that inherits both the above base classes. Assign values to the integer variable of both base classes and print their corresponding values using function in the derived class. Here is the program code, and there we go with the output. This program is an example of multiple inheritance. As the program demonstrates, to inherit more than one base class, use a comma-separated list. Further, be sure to use an access specifier for each base class that is inherited. For example, on line 27 we have class C, 
colon, or inherits, public A, public B. We now come to end of the chapter on inheritance. In our next chapter we will learn polymorphism using class and objects. Until then, take care, and have a nice time.